Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. And you know how you make America great again? Tell Donald Trump to go to hell. Mr. President, everybody in this room has one thing in common. We all have your back. Can I just say, sir, I believe that you are America's Poet Laureate. Uh, some of this, I, it's, it's like poetry. The I don't Thank just, you. you. Can I have some story time music? This sure. is just... <laughs> the gnarled and splotchy septuagenarian stepped to the podium. He was knee-deep in it now. Abortion bans were kicking in. He knew it would hurt him in the polls. Wait till November, he shrieked at the Jesus nutters on which he relied. I can't uh, walk a tightrope in Cuban heels. Half these dudes paid for abortions for their mistresses all the time, and the other half, well, he knew Lindsey Graham was just a little weasel who used to dance for nickels in his family's bar. <laughs> Why couldn't he have kept his slurry mouth shut? Now he had a firestorm on his tiny hands. He never got the abortion thing. He probably paid for a dozen in the 80s alone. He never knew if it was a shakedown, but he couldn't risk it. He had lawyers for that. A thousand bucks and an NDA and he'd be done. Easy peasy. Oh, the good old days, he thought. Now he had to skirt the issue. But how? Most of these mega freaks only cared about guns and this pro-life crap. Hell, these idiots even thought he was a Christian. It all creeped him out, all this weirdo cross stuff. He wanted music to play when he walked into a room and he wanted to get a high and hit on chicks. That's it. <laughs> it's just, I swear, no one nails him like you do because you spent so much time around him, around The Apprentice, right? Is that he despises these idiots that, that, that right. keep sending him money. Exactly. And that's why I write those things. I'm just trying to put people in his frame of mind. The facts are all true. I'm exaggerating sort of the literature, you know, the literary way I describe it. But that's all true. Lindsey Graham did dance for Nichols in his family's bar. He grew up <laughs> upstairs. You know, he that's racked what he balls. Did. He, danced with he racked balls. He, he literally said it himself that he racked balls yes, until the sun came up. Mm -hmm. I believe oh, I'm sure he I'm sure he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have it here somewhere. But uh, yeah. He, yeah, he literally. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, no, because it was a pool hall, wasn't it? That's what he meant. That's what you and I both meant. He racked pool. Yeah. Pool hall. Racking balls. There's no shame in it. There's no, no shame in it. No. Uh, no. Now rack balls until the sun came up. <laughs> <laughs> did he actually say that, he knowing did. that would go on tape? Yes, he did. He said that to a, an interviewer. Okay, so no, um, yeah, this abortion thing. I first of all, what you said, I feel like we all know is true that you know he's paid for abortions. And do you think any of that will come out? Because I we're already at peak absurdity that an adjudicated rapist who right. is responsible for women losing their bodily autonomy in, in America is now lying about, and he's obviously panicked about. He sees the same polling we do on abortion rights, right? Absolutely. He knows he's going to lose. He, he, he crunches the numbers. He knew he lost in 2020 on the morning of 2020. I saw a clip of him just to speak to the fact that I understand him well. I actually heard a clip on, on the radio. He had visited a campaign headquarters in Virginia, and I could tell in his voice he knew he lost. And that was the by the early afternoon of November 20th. You can hear the defeat in his voice. Everything is bluster. They have internal polling. He knew he lost. He knows he's going to lose this time. He knows he's paid for at least a half a dozen abortions. I heard about it. I know people have worked with him that told me about it. But to answer your question, he has people sign NDAs. He doesn't just pay for the abortion and you go off. He has you sign an NDA. And most of the women that have done that are probably scared to come forward because they haven't seen a lot of accountability for him so far, besides E. Jean Carroll. And, yeah. And she's a hero. You yeah, know, but, no, absolutely. Well, I, I mean, but it's it's so, we played a few sound bites this morning, Noel, and it's just like his panic is so obvious i mean he's i think someone said he's taken what 16 different <laughs> positions on abortion or said you know i i mean leave it to the states then the next day arizona does and then he's like oh no that's too far but, but we should let the states decide like none of what he's saying I, I think makes any sense to anybody does it no it's a word salad he's trying to weasel around it he's everyone knows he'll let the far right and the christian right do whatever they want once he gets into office he knows the arizona ruling is going to hurt him and he's panicked you know and and it's it's what he deserves for getting in bed with these you know regressive you know, people that are trying to bring our country backwards and, and attack human rights. It's not just a women's issue. It's a human rights issue. It's a yeah. health care issue. It's yeah. insanity. Yeah. Back to uh, story time with Noel real quick. Okay. 
Noel tweets, uh, now he's got to address these greasy fools. He's never seen so many vape pens in his life. No wonder Van Keen never went to his rallies anymore. It was like Lollapalooza who folks who, for folks who said, uh, hell yes, you can supersize it. He never trusted Arizona. Too hot, no beach, snakes. He uh, pissed himself once when he slithered, when one slithered out to the 18th hole in Scottsdale that time. Never trusted the place, and everyone over 49 looked like a damn raisin, except that Carrie Lake. He didn't mind her, but she was crazy as a loon. Ugh, he knew, knew he was going to lose in November. You're, okay. What? Former Phoenix resident. Here. Yes, yes, sir. He, I know. He, he tr- I know. He tried, I'm sorry. he tried to build this condo tower in central Phoenix. But he lost because the local homeowners association yeah. drove him out of town. He hates Arizona because of that. Yeah. Oh my God. And now Arizona is. I mean, likely. Well, I mean, very good chance we'll go blue because of this, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ruben Gallego, vote yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah absolutely. This just in. Star of the uh, sexy liberal New York show, August third. Get your tickets. He just agreed to be a celebrity panelist. For the New York show, uh, August 3rd, Town Hall. We're so excited. Right. Thank you so much, Noel. Thank, thank you for asking me, Stephanie. And talking about making a difference, you make a difference, and your listeners make a difference. Aww. And it's much needed now, so I appreciate that, and it's an honor to be here. Oh, honey, we appreciate all that you do. We really do. What's uh, Sandy in Minneapolis? We're, that's where we're kicking off Sexy Liberal this Saturday. Hey, Sandy. Yes. Hi, Stephanie. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Hi. I cannot wait to see you guys on Saturday, and I have VIP tickets, <gasps> oh my so God. I get to do the meet and grow. I got a big hug. Here it comes. Okay. I'm oh, little, I can't wait. I'm it's, super it's needy just, right now. Ask these guys. I'm super needy. I'm like a stage five clinger. I'm like a koala. Stage 10. Yeah, I'm like a koala. I'm not going to let go. Nope. Nope. You can cling to me as much as you want, but oh I'm, is Chris going to be there? <laughs> Chris is not going to be there. The guy that owns the show that's trying to kill me for the life insurance money will be there. Yeah, I'm going to the Western oh, okay. Western shows, yeah. and Ron's yeah. going to the Eastern shows. Yeah, there you yes. go. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. We, we can't wait. Going to the Harmar. Okay. All right. We'll see you at the Har. Day. See you at the Harmar. Love you. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. The dead Mall. I, right. Yeah. I've never been able to say I'm going to the Harmar tomorrow, but I am. You I'm are. flying tomorrow to the Harmar. Harmar. Okay. All right, Joel. <laughs> no. There it is, my first drink of the day, Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic. Many of you know my, my story. I stopped drinking wine for three years during COVID, during the lockdown as part of a health reset. Now I drink wine in moderation, but this is an amazing new product. I've always believed in probiotics and Z-Biotics. Check this out. You drink just one of these. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. I am using this and I feel great in the morning. I don't have to worry if I have an extra glass of wine. I still feel great in the morning. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. I've always had acid reflux problems. It is this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. All I know is it works. It is Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic. Go to zbiotics.com/slash political voices or scan the QR code on the screen right now. <laughs> 